Looking for magic cards? At flipsidegaming.com you can now use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10 while supporting the channel at the same time. Alright, pack one, pick one, our rare Guild Mages Forum. Not a card I'm excited to first pick. If I get it late, I might put it in my deck. One plus one plus one counter can make a pretty big difference. What is exciting is Conclave Tribunal, just an excellent removal spell. Can easily play this in both Celestia or Boros. And uh, the fact that it exiles deals with some creatures permanently that otherwise might uh, be somewhat problematic. Uh, other good cards in the pack worth uh, pointing out. Deadweight, excellent, cheap removal. Good way to keep up with the Boros deck just by killing a creature for one mana. Healer's Hawk is great in both Boros and still okay in Celestia to help you convoke. But especially in Boros where you get to mentor onto it a few times. But uh, I think the pick here is probably just going to be the Conclave Tribunal. Good removal, still flexible, can go in any of the white guilds. Also splashable since uh, you don't mind casting this later in the game. And then one can hope to wheel Healer's Hawk. Probably not going to happen, but if we end up in Boros, I guess Cosmotronic Wave is a fine one to have on the wheel. So we'll take Tribunal. Alright, second pick. We might have to switch gears here, since Ladev Champion is excellent. Great uh, mana sink in the late game for Selesnya. And just a great threat by itself. Plays well with Vigilance creatures, since those can attack and still tap for the Ladev Champion to make it bigger. Other good cards in the pack. Uh, Camus's Insight, of course, is amazing. Doesn't go all that well with our first pick, Conclave Tribunal, since there's no Azorius Guild supported in the set. But if we wanted to just take the best card in the pack and stay flexible, I guess Camus's is a little bit better than Champion. But given that we already have Tribunal, I think Champion makes more sense. And yeah, try and make Celestia work here. If I had taken the Chemister's Insight, what would I be looking at here? Maybe Devious Cover-Up, maybe Burgle Rat for Demir. Given that I took the Ladef Champion, we're looking at Woodshaper, Fresh Face Recruits. Don't think any of these two white cards are a uh, consideration here. Recruit is decent if we're a more aggressive Celestia deck. Of course, we could still be Boros, for all we know. If we don't take the Ladef Champion, we could still be a Boros deck just as easily. And I guess Champion's technically splashable, although you usually don't want to splash in a Boros deck. But Recruit's still fine. Um, Woodshaper we might also wheel. Another card that bots take particularly highly. So yeah, I guess I'll take the Recruit for now. Alright, am I seeing any good Celestia cards? Just a Woodshaper. There's some okay Boros cards here. I like having a couple sergeants in my Boros decks to top off my curve. The boar is great if we have some evasive creatures or first strike creatures to pump up. Great with Mentor to make your Mentor creature bigger so it can still Mentor onto something else. The Blade Instructor is fine if we play this in either Boros or Selesnya, but it's much better in Boros where you can back it up with more combo tricks. In Selesnya it's more about playing creatures and then playing big convo creatures and then try and take over the game that way, whereas Boros just wants to play small creatures and then just keep attacking turn after turn, triggering Mentor, backing up creatures with uh, pump spells, and that's where the Blade Instructor is much better. So we're kind of facing a similar decision as the previous pack where we could take a Wood Shaper, but we could also just take the white card that still fits in Boros, doesn't commit us to Celestia, and the Wood Shaper might even wheel. So yeah, I think I'll go with the Blade Instructor here. Ooh, nice. All right, so this is definitely a good reason to stay Celestia as well. The World Soul Colossus gives you a great curve topper, no matter the board state. Yeah, that's just a very good card. Plays well with the Ladef Champion, since we can make tokens and then play an even bigger Colossus. So, yeah, let's just stick to Celestia from now on. Not the biggest fan of the Peacemaker. Even though you're not always a hyper aggro deck in Selesnya, making the opponent gain for life is still usually a liability as opposed to an advantage. That being said, there's not much else in the pack that I'm interested in. Okapi is pretty weak. Sure, it has Vigilance, so technically you could attack and then still Convoke, but at 2 toughness it's pretty vulnerable. 
so it often just trades off. So in that sense, it's usually a better Golgari card than Selesnya card, just because a 3-2 with Vigilance you kind of have to block and trade off for, and that's going to fuel undergrowth for your other creatures in Golgari, but still not an exciting card since there's just so, so many 2-mana two 2-2s two in the set that trade off for the Okapi at a mana advantage for the opponent. Then the District Guard, probably one of the weaker 2-drops you can get. Uh, Loxodon Restore, pretty weak convo creature. So I could take a Boros Guildgate in case I want to splash red in my Celestia deck, which might be the pick here. Yeah, you never know. Alright, there's some options here. Could take the Recluse if we end up low on flying creatures or interaction. Having a 1-4 reach is useful. Could take another Guildgate. Could take an Urban Utopia as an enchantment that fixes our mana that we can find with the Sumala Woodshaper that draws a card. But uh, I think I'm still in for the Recluse. The Motion is really only a card you want in the most hyper-aggressive Boros decks. Doesn't often make the cut in uh, Selesnya, so I'll take the Recluse. Alright, pretty happy with the Celestia Guildgate. Again, we're kind of counting on wheeling some of those wood shapers that we passed up on earlier, so I don't need to prioritize this one. But uh, guild gates for fixing are great. Having just one or two guild gates in a two-color deck is still going to improve your mana base significantly. So I'll take this one. Alright, pretty happy with the beetle, just a fine two-drop. And especially with some mentor creatures like Blade Instructor, being able to put an extra plus one counter on it is quite useful. So Beetle plus Mentor is definitely a combo. And nothing here that I'm too excited about. Sometimes you'll put Vine in your Celestia deck just to have a one mana creature to help out with Convoke. Turn one, one drop, turn two, two drop, turn three, Convoke out a Rosemain Centaur. So that's why the one drops can be useful. Again, not the biggest fan of the Peacemaker, could still take it. Crawl Foragers, also pretty mediocre in Celestia. Could just take a Gorgon as kind of a Death Touch creature, since... Yeah, the Celestia deck doesn't often end up with a ton of interaction. So just having something that can trade off no matter the size of the opponent's creatures is useful. Double green, not the easiest on the mana base, but uh, could still be worth it over a Peacemaker here. Now I can take the Wood Shaper. Sometimes I'll play a Ladev Guardian. If you have a lot of 2-drops, you can reliably play this on turn 3. And paying 3 mana for a 2-4, especially in a world full of Boros decks, is not bad. But uh, I like my 2-for-1s, and Wood Shaper is one of those. Now I'll take the Vine for the reasons I mentioned earlier. Nothing here that I'm gonna play. And we got an Okapi anyway. Alright, so the first pack went okay. Like we've got three exciting cards in Colossus, Hiladaf Champion, Conclave Tribunal, and then a bunch of filler basically. Uh, some of it's bad filler like Okapi, some of it's good filler like Beetle and Recruit. So we'll see. Well then. This is probably the best card we could have hoped for. Trostani Discordant is insane. And we're already Celestia, so that's an easy pick. Can hope to wheel Centaur, can hope to wheel Guildgate, maybe Unicorn Wheels. But yeah, that's an easy Trostani. <laughs> wow. Well, we're definitely doing it here. Venerated Loxodon would love a Luminous Bonds too, especially with a uh, Wood Shaper. But, uh, I mean, we're kind of building a constructed deck over here. Sure, not gonna say no to an Indrik. Generous Tray is also pretty high up on our list, because we kind of need to make sure we have enough cheap creatures to leverage the Convoke on Loxodon, so I do want to make sure I pick up enough 2-drops. Uh, Stray can also help with Convoke while drawing a card, but the Indrik is still too good to pass up on here. Alright, so some interesting Boros cards with Legionnaire and Clarion. Given that we're a Selassina deck, we're probably not too interested in splashing Deafening Clarion, but it's definitely one of those cards that can be quite unexpected for the opponent and win you a game, since typically the Boros deck also doesn't want Clarion, so it's often a card that does end up getting splashed. 
Aaron Shell Beetle. Again, we want enough two drops, seems like the pick here. And it's probably better than the District Guard. I love me a Rock Charger. Great synergy with Mentor creatures too, since we can give like a Blade Instructor flying and a Mentor onto the Rock Charger itself. To make it bigger, would love a Generous Stray as well, but gotta take the Charger over it. Healer's Hawk would be great, especially alongside Venerated Loxodon. But there's also Luminous Bonds, and we don't have much removal outside of one Conclave Tribunal. So I think I still gotta go with the Luminous Bonds here. But a Hawk would be quite powerful in this deck, pumping it with Trostani, pumping it with the Loxodon, and helping out with Convoke. Those are all relevant uh, interactions. Alright, now I can take my Rosemane Centaur. Shieldmaid would also be pretty good, but still want to make sure I have at least one or two Rosemane Centaurs. Uh, this is a bit of a blank. Don't think I'll need a second Recluse, but more likely to make the cut than a Pack Beast or a Color the Culprit. Alright, Swarm Companions is actually pretty good in this deck, where we have both Aloxodon and Trostani, a few Convo creatures. We've got Ladef Champion that can use those extra tokens to make himself bigger. We've got uh, a Rosemane to Convoke, so yeah, Swarm Companions looks good. Alright, might play the one Ladef Guardian, we'll see. And... I doubt I'm playing any of these creatures or cards. Maybe a color of the culprits. Uh, do I want Vine? The problem with Vine is that if our convo creature is locked on, I'm not too excited about putting a plus one plus one counter on a creature that I'm gonna sacrifice anyway. So I might just take the guard as an extra two drop in case I don't pick up any more. I already have a color. Don't think I want Canopy when I have two Recluses. So I guess I'll take a Pack Beast, but again, probably not going to make the cut. And a Shield Mate, last pick, why not? And we still have an entire pack left to go here. Well, remember when we picked up that uh, Boros Guildgate? Could come in handy now. Although, there's some good Celestian cards here too. Stalwarts, Colossus would both be excellent, even Preopon would be okay with some of our bigger creatures here. So how greedy do we get? So let's real quick kind of build the deck at the moment. Don't think Gorgon makes a cut. So this is kind of what I'm working with here. And the vine probably also doesn't end up making it. I have one Boros Guildgate and that's it for fixing. But Aurelia is uh, no doubt very good and we can hope to wheel another Boros Guildgate. Stalwart would also be amazing as a good two drop. Plays well with our Rock Charger and can level up our tokens. Another Colossus would be great. Yeah, that is true, we do have double Urban Utopia that we could also play for fixing. Since chat wants me to, I guess I'll take Aurelia. Alright, why not a Conclave Cavalier? This card's insane. Healer Song again would also be great. But uh, Cavalier's still probably good enough that I should take it here. Alright, now I can take my Healer's Hawk and not feel bad about it. Generous Stray would also be excellent, but uh, I think Hawk has a ton of synergy in this deck. Alright, now I could take my Generous Stray, could take my Parhelion Patrol. This is where we kind of need to look at our curve and see where we need to fill up some holes. Oh, never mind, I guess I didn't even see the Boros Guild Gates. Yeah, maybe that's even the pick. Alright, I guess I'll take Guildgate and then hopefully I can wheel one of these two, probably this tray. Nothing here that I really want. I already have a guard in the sideboard, so I'll just take an uncommon for the vaults. Street Triant could actually be okay in a token strategy, but I doubt we'll play it. 
Uh, Skyline Scout is probably okay. Decent 2-drop. I wanted one or two extra 2-drops. So that fits the bill. Nice. Celestia Guild Gates. Improve our mana so we can maybe afford to run a mountain for uh, Aurelia. But also just when we have Conclave Cavalier, we want to make sure we have enough Guild Gates to play Cavalier on 4. All right, could take another one. Siege Worm is a consideration, another scout. So I already have double Celestia Guild Gate, double Boros Guild Gate. Playing too many gates is also potentially a problem as all our lands come into play tapped and we slow down the deck. So I don't know if I need more than two Celestia Guild Gates since we don't really have any gates payoff cards like the Gargoyle, for example. Uh, would I play another scout? I think I would. So... Currently sitting at like 21 playables, so need like one or two more. At the top of my curve I already have Loxodon, Centaur, Trostani, Colossus, Indric. So I don't know if I need a Siege Worm, so I'll just take a scout. Alright, wield the World Soul Colossus, why not? I think that's gonna be the pick over Prey Upon, as good as Prey Upon can be in this type of deck. But just playing an even bigger Colossus is also pretty good. Our deck is not going to be very subtle. We're just going to play one massive creature after the other. Sergeant's actually somewhat uh, enticing in this type of deck where we have all these gates and uh, we're planning to splash red anyway, but probably can't take it over Generous Stray. But worth pointing out that the Sergeant could be playable in this deck. Alright, another one. Do I want a Dissident instead? So our deck is pretty much built. Need to make like one cut. Could be a Blade Instructor and I could just play an extra Generous Stray. There's some other cards I can consider cutting. Uh, in terms of two drops, I think I'm pretty happy. The Recruit is also not the most exciting card in our deck, since we don't have a ton of Mentor to make it bigger, but it's all fine. So what are we thinking? Stray versus Dissident. Am I playing the Woodshaper? I think I am, with two powerful enchantments we can find. The Recruit's a maybe, the Blade Instructor's a maybe. Uh, we didn't end up with a ton of Flying Creatures, so I think I need the Recluse. Companions looks good, especially with uh, Loxodon. And also double Colossus to help us convoke. Yeah, like the Blade Instructor and the Recruiter are probably the weakest cards in this deck. And I could replace both of them with either a 2-drop or a 3-drop. When we have this many powerful cards, just drawing extra cards seems good. Alright. So... Let's take a look. I could also play one Urban Utopia to have a third red source. Or I could just play Mountain. I don't think I want only the two Boros Guild Gates for Aurelia. But one Mountain could be okay given that we have double Selesnia Guild Gate. It's only going to be awkward with Conclave Cavalier. But one Mountain is probably still acceptable. So I need to make two cuts. So how about I just cut the Recruit and cut the Blade Instructor. Definitely a 17 land deck since our curve is relatively high. And we want to make sure we have enough good fixing for Aurelia. But one mountain seems acceptable. And that leaves me with one mountain, double Boros Guild Gate, two Celestia Guild Gates. And then we got to figure out the uh, basic land count here. So let's have a look. Right now I have nine white sources and nine green sources. That looks okay to me. I've got a pretty even split. Yeah, that looks good. What are the, the four bombs in the deck? I guess Trostani, Aurelia, Loxodon, and who's number four? I guess Cavalier. Just a fantastic four. And looks good enough. Well, hopefully we can hit some land drops. Up against Celestia. I think I'm down to attack. 
Don't necessarily want to trade since we have a Trostani coming up, but I don't necessarily expect a block. And I could Tribunal, but I think I'll save it for now. Alright, that's a good target for Tribunal. Yeah, let's just get rid of it now. The reason to play Stray is to kind of try and hit our land drops more, so I can play Trostani on curve. But the 4-4 is going to be somewhat problematic. I could potentially beat the 4-4 by going Trostani into Indric, and then the 5-5 can beat up on the 4-4. But I don't want to necessarily rely on that interaction. So here I can attack with the shield mate, play a stray to try and hit my lands. Alright, at least we'll get to play Aurelia. So two of the Fantastic Four already in hand. Mentors onto the Hawk. I think I'm fine with the trades. Might see a trick, but... This seems fine. Alright. So we're getting pressured in the skies, which is definitely one of our weaknesses, but we've got some good tools at our disposal. So I've got to choose between Trostani and Aurelia pretty much. If I play Trostani, the 2-2 tokens can necessarily attack past a patrol. If I draw a line, I can Indric, kill patrol, and then the lifelinkers get to connect. Potentially. I think I Trostani. I'm sitting here thinking between which one of my two mythic rares do I want to play. But yeah, it's uh, worth thinking about it. Looks like maybe a prey upon is happening. So we're gonna take quite a beating here, they even get to mantra onto the hawk. So we're definitely in a bit of trouble. The good news is that uh, topples is down to one card in hand. There's a land, comes into play tapped. So let's say they have another pump spell for patrol. They pump it, give it plus two plus two let's say. Mantrum to the Hawk, then I would die unless I play Aurelia or gain life here. But I guess playing Aurelia is pretty good here. And then I get to pump a token and attack as well. And then next turn, the Indric can hopefully help us uh, stabilize. So yeah, this is kind of the trick we were expecting. So I'm gonna put them on take heart, let's say, plus two, plus two. I think I should just take it. And now I could Indric take out Patrol, although then the take heart means I don't actually kill patrol, but I can just decline to fight with Indric. Alternatively, I could beetle, put counter on Aurelia, make it a 3 6, so it can even block past it, plus 2 plus 2 effects, and then I still get to play my Wood Shaper. Question is, do I want him to use a trick to save the patrol? Eh, I think I still Indric here. I think I should Indric first in case they don't have a trick. Because then I get to attack with my lifelinker too. Alright. So there was no trick. It's even better. And now I get to pump Aurelia. Attack a mantra on my 1-1 one -one making it a 2-2. Two -two, so it can attack past the dissident. And once we connect here we should be in a pretty good uh, spot. Alright. No attack with a hawk. Now I can beetle Aurelia, so even if they did have a plus two plus two, I don't lose my Aurelia. I guess I can Wood Shaper first in case I find something better to do. Oh, 
Well, it's pretty good. <laughs> Feel a little bit bad, not gonna lie. Yeah, let's still beetle Aurelia, I think, and then get my attack in while I can. And then Loxodon second main looks fine. And then the question is, where do I pump? Might just be Aurelia herself. And then the Indra could also attack and mentor onto it. All right, so I gotta think for a second if there's like any sweeper I need to play around. I guess like citywide busts could be bad, but I don't think I'm gonna play around it. So tap this, this, this. They wanna tap out of my other life linker. Eh, that's probably fine. And then I'm gonna keep Aurelia on defense here. All right, so we drew three of the four of the Fantastic Four here, and we got there. All right, let's keep it up. All right, decent hands. I think I like Shieldmate early. Since it's a creature I care about the least if it trades off, and it can maybe attack and help me convoke Centaur at the same time. Probably still play the Rock Charger, I could go tap land 2-drop. Uh, what am I doing with the Centaur next turn? Nah, we'll figure it out. If I draw an untap land, I can maybe still attack. Like the shield mate can attack if they don't have a blocker and still convoke. And the rock charger only gets in for one point anyway. Alright, we drew the untapped plants. I think what I'm gonna do is attack with just the shield mates. Uh, maybe I should just play the untapped plan actually. Not give him the chance to trade. Although trading shield mate for centipede is a good exchange for us. Now nah, let's just send both. And then I can give the center flying if the rock charger is still there. Double scout, so plenty of flying incoming here. We're good at attacking with flying creatures, we're not so good at blocking flyers. If you're playing against a Golgari deck, you can usually expect them to have some bomb in uh, their colors, since you don't often end up Golgari if it's not for a powerful rare. Well, speaking of powerful rares. That looks pretty good. All right, well, that was quite a beating. A bit land light, but we do have multiple creatures to help us convoke Colossus, so even if we don't hit too many land drops, we can play big Colossus. The Indric is pretty far away, so it's got some issues, but still probably keep... Ooh, I like Hawk into Beetle, so I'm gonna play Hawk here. I could have just uh, played shield mate and then if I hit my land drop go hawk, put a counter on it with a beal right away. But getting to connect with hawk right away is also nice. No, that waits. Alright. Fair enough.
Up against Demir, Veilshade. Rose Mane's not bad. So I've got two options, Companion or Beetle. I would be okay trading Shieldmate for Shade. So I guess I'll attack, see what they do, and then play Companions. I'll take it. And a Bartism Bats. It's not too bad, can easily attack into that. Do we think they would trade the Bats for a shield mate? I don't think they do. And if they do, it's not the end of the world. So I think I should send one token and the shield mate and leave the other one back. Although maybe that's gonna tip them off that we have a Convoke creature we want to cast and then they'll trade. I could just go Beetle into Centaur and not attack. Although it seems kind of a waste not to attack into this Bats. I'll send, and we'll see what happens. Yeah, I didn't think so. I'm totally fine racing since we've got a bunch of lifelink creatures and a luminous bonds to prevent them from playing like a Douser of Lights and blocking. It's gonna be another Veiled Shade instead which does potentially block as a 3-3, so it's only the Rosemane that can really attack into it. But I could then attack with Rosemane and convoke out a giant World Soul Colossus, which seems pretty good. I guess this Daneful Stroke can punish us. I could also go like Scout into Colossus, make it one smaller, but have the Scout in play as well. I want this to be at least a 4-4, ideally a 5-5, so I think I'm gonna hold on to the Scouts and just attack with the Centaur for now. Let's make a 5-5. Five five. No stroke, please. No. Alright, that's bad. Because making the Colossus a 5-5 five five means it can attack past Dowsers and Crabs. We do still have the Beetle, so that could have also opened up an extra attack, and we've got Luminous Bonds to get rid of a 5 Toughness creature. So we could have been more aggressive in playing out to two drops and then convoke, so the stroke wouldn't have been as bad. But I guess we could only play one two drop there. Alright, informants, blocks or small stuff. Keeps the shade back as well, so if they double block and pump shade, they could take out the centaur. Generous stray. So we've got some options. It's too bad we can't send in the life linkers since we're kind of dying to this Bartism bats. I could Beetle put counter on Centaur so it can still attack. That's a reasonable start. I could straight to try and hit my land drops. Those are the main uh, considerations. Can probably take at least one more hit from the bands before I need to Luminous Bonds it. So if I'm if my plan is to Luminous Bonds next turn, the fact that I hit a land drop is not relevant unless I hit two land drops, one now and one next turn. So I don't think I should count on it. So I'm just going to beetle up the centaur here and get a nice attack in. And then next turn I'm probably going to be forced to Luminous Bonds, but we'll see how much stuff they keep back. Right now they can pump shade three times, up to a 5-5. Five five. Of course, chum blocking with a lifelink token doesn't cost me too much, but it also doesn't force them to pump. So if I were to put Centaur in front of Shade, they have to spend their entire turn pumping the Shade and it still would result in a trade. They've got one card left in hand. So they kind of want to pump their Shade anyway since they're not doing much else with their mana. I could block with Shieldmates and all the small stuff and that would still result in a trade. Don't have any Convoke creatures in hand so I don't really mind losing the small stuff and make sure to keep Centaur. So I think I like blocking with everyone like this, I've got 5 power, if they pump 3 times it still trades, also gain 2, and if they don't pump then I gain 2 life for free. So this seems good. If we had a bunch of Convoke creatures in hand I might play differently, but we don't. So I could easily see them not pump all the way, 
so they can maybe keep the shade on defense. Ooh, opponent uh, messed up here, I think. They tapped two swamps with the first pump, leaving them unable to pump a third time. So unless they've got like... Alright, pass wall adapts. It's actually pretty scary, since that can threaten to close out the game. The mana issue is coming back to bite us a little bit, since Indrik would be a good answer for adapter bats. Well, center's attacking, so that's step one. Opponent chumps. So let's say they activate this, make it unblockable, pump shade twice. So that's seven unblockable coming in. So not lethal. That's important to point out. So if I play my scout, scout plus centaur could present lethal next turn. Or I could just luminous bonds of bats, which might be the better play. Just so I don't take a ton of damage to begin with. So what happens if I play the scouts? How does my opponent attack? They probably just attack me with the bats. And then leave shade back for centaur. Why not bonds the shade? That's also reasonable, although I don't have a long-term answer for the bats, whereas I can potentially trade for the shade. And if they make shade unblockable with the adept, they don't have a ton of mana to sink into the ability, so it doesn't hit as hard. I think I'm just going to bonds the bats here and try and minimize the damage I take. So they've got a land. I don't think that changes anything. I guess it does. It means they can pump the shade four times, but I can double block it. And I don't mind trading off resources when we have four cards in hand. If I take it, I guess I would take six, and then next turn I would be dead, and I don't have lethal right now. I could jump with a beetle. Maybe jumping with beetles at play, I attack with center for five. They take it, go to one. And then next turn I'm still not taking lethal. And then center forces a chump. I think trading is fine, I think jumping with a beetle is fine. Chumping with Beetle is very aggressive. If the opponent doesn't draw anything relevant, that could be good. But I'm taking a bit of a gamble, whereas I'm kind of fine playing a longer game here with double strain hands. I don't know. I think I'll chump. Playing a stray is fine and all, but if they decide to make unblockable, it doesn't really help my cause. Well, that's just a great draw. So now I get to attack and Conclave Tribunal. So, attack. And I think I should just Tribunal the Shade at this point. The Adept could still be problematic if they draw a big creature here. But I'm hoping they don't and then they'll be forced to chump. Who needs lands when you can convoke? Bam. All right, the Fantastic Four still on track. All right, so we're a planes away from a Cavalier. Gender straight to draw lands. Yeah, this seems fine. Let's just play our planes. Up against the abs on deck here. So that's often something you'll see is Golgari playing the Wood Shaper. Instead looks like we might be up against the spicy gate deck here instead. There are a few gate payoff cards in Guilds of Ravnica. The, the sword, the equipment is pretty good. Of course, Guild Summits is a good one. So those are the cards we could see from our opponent here. Alright, that's a good draw. Now I kind of like just playing a big Colossus. X equals 5 here.
can also expect to see some uh, sever strands from the opponents. Generous Stray plus sever strands is a good combo. It's going to be Peacemaker instead. So this is one of those rare decks that wants to prolong the game, although their opponent seems to be missing some land drops. So Indric looks amazing here, since that clears a path for Colossus to make a clean attack. And I think I'm okay trading off Stray if they double block. Trading off means that it's going to be more difficult for the opponent to double or triple block. So our big stuff can keep attacking. Not a Peacemaker. Alright. Ooh, Rock Charger is great. It feels premature for me to use the Conclave Tribunal. I could still attack with the World Soul Colossus, although now the Indrik doesn't have a great attack. And I'll hang on to the Tribunal. Our hand is still pretty good, but our opponents got access to basically all colors. They've got a lot of cards in hand, so who knows what to expect here. Intervention kill Charger. Tribunal would let me smash for a lot. I can play Cavalier and then still Tribunal. I think I should hang on to Tribunal still. And then maybe I should just trade Indrik for Peacemaker, even if it doesn't feel great. And Beetle gets in two since if they want to block it, they can double block the Indrik. I'll keep a land in hand in case of a Burglar Rats. So the Peacemakers gained eight life this game. Definitely. In the opponent's advantage, they also gain 3 from intervention, so we dealt 20 damage, but we're uh, not victorious quite yet. I would hazard a guess that we're gonna see a Artful Takedown here, tapping Colossus, killing Cavalier. So Loxodon could be good. So if I move to combat, they take down, tap Colossus, kill Cavalier, I guess that's not too bad. Yeah, I guess I'll attack. Because then if I get the 2-2s two from Cavalier, those can become bigger with Loxodon as well. Capture Sphere instead. Fair enough. Just send these two, probably see a chum block. I could also use Conclave Tribunal to get rid of the Capture Sphere if I wanted to. I think I'm better off just playing this out. Still keep land in hand in case of a Burglar Rat type effect. All right, we got there. All right, so far so good. Uh, reasonable hands, got all our colors, one of our fantastic foreign hands. Do have a five drop and a six drop, only three lands, but we're on the draw. Up against the Demir. That's fine. Didn't have a play lined up for next turn, so we can just replay it. Ooh, points missing lands explains why they wanted to surveil there. Well, this could be a massacre. Gotta watch out for the vapors giving minus one, minus one to all our stuff. 
I guess Colossus is fine. Just more late game stuff. Next turn I'm just slamming Trostani. Unless we suspect I'm keeping up a counterspell. It's gonna be another disappearance. Is this on upkeep or main phase? Main phase. So they probably drew that for the turn. Still gonna just slam Trostani. And our opponent explodes. Well, that's unfortunate. They even surveilled and still couldn't hit a third land. Alright, 5-0. and oh. Alright, so what about this hand? Two lands, but we're on the draw. This hand's good if we hit a third land. We've got basically three draw steps to get there. I do have a Healer's Hawk in the deck, but no Gates in hand, so it doesn't matter whether I play Forest or Plains. No attack with Urchin, so not even bluffing a pump spell. I guess I'll play the Spider. Got two of our removal spells against Boros, that's good. Opponents playing very passively. I'm happy just convoking the Centaur out. Command a Storm. That's fine. Yeah, maybe it's a more mid rangey Boros deck. So we should adjust kind of our expectation a little bit too. So I'm just going to play Woodshaper for now. Could potentially get in for one point of damage, doesn't seem necessary. So her hand is quite powerful, wouldn't mind hitting some land drops. Maniacal Rage the Urchin, it's not going to end well for them. All right, I see. I'll take it. So here the reason to Tribunal over Luminous Bonds is in case they have their own Conclave Tribunal to remove my Luminous Bonds. The reason to Luminous Bonds over Tribunal is maybe that Tribunal could be more mana efficient later. But I guess I can go Champion into Tribunal, which is still pretty neat. So I think I'll do that. And then I should probably just attack with a wood shaper. In case I add uh, two damage to an attacking creature, the beetle is slightly more valuable. Could have also kept Recluse on defense in case we fear Sky Knight Legionnaire, but at 15 I'm not too concerned. Alright, that's a good land to draw. So, do I want to play a 6-6 Colossus? Seems good since it even survives Commander Storm. So I think I'll do that. So, opponents got three cards in hand at 18. It's going to be a bodyguard, not too threatening by himself. Can even just play the Indric and get rid of it, that seems fine. Do I want to attack first? No, I want to play Indric so I can pump champion for one more. And the nice thing about Indric is that if the opponent does play pump spell here, I'm not forced to fight, I can just keep my 4-4. The bodyguard still can block alone and I get in for a ton of damage, so... Alright, 6-0. and oh. Time for the finals. Seems like we drafted the deck like 10 minutes ago, but here we are. 
decent opening hand. We'll need to draw second planes. Ooh, that's a nice start. Hawk into Beetle. Make a 2-2 lifelink on turn 2. Alright, I like me a generous stray. Let's get in for two. That's fine. Perfect. Curving out beautifully, turn 1 Hawk, turn 2 Beetle, turn 3 Stray, turn 4 Cavalier. But there's a Crab, so... Gotta be careful here. Let's get in with a Hawk. Turn 5 Trostani would be the Cherry on top. Alright, Watcher. Blocks our hawks, so probably got a Luminous Bonds that one. Or I could play Giant Colossus, that also works. So how big can we make this Colossus? 7-7, uh, seven, seven. it's pretty big. Opponent doesn't have double black, so they can't, like, kill it with the uh, common removal spell. And no need to play the Guild Gate quite yet. Could also play Ladaf Champion first and get that in play as well. But then my Colossus is going to be only a 5-5 five five and still dies to Command Storm. So I, j I think I want to go for biggest uh, Colossus we can make, which is 7-7. Seven seven. Maybe World Soul Colossus is the fourth member of the Fantastic Four instead of Conclave Cavalier, although it's a bit awkward since we've got two of them. I think I like Luminous Bonzing, the Watcher, since I probably want to do that at some point anyway here. And then Hawk and Colossus can attack. I could send Cavalier. Don't think there's a huge incentive to do so. Unless I guess they go for the double block and have a way to pump the Urchin or deal damage to Colossus. In which case the Cavalier could have gotten in for 4. But if they pump the Urchin, then they could have double blocked Cavalier and basically traded Urchin for Cavalier or... Yeah, that would not have been amazing necessarily. But maybe I should have attacked anyway. Discards Devious cover-up since they're too far behind on board. So they did deal with my 7-7, seven seven, but they did lose a crab, so now Cavalier can start attacking too. And Champion's a great mana sink. That's fine. Great synergy between Vigilance and Ladef Champion. So I've got another 7-7 here. They can triple block Cavalier. But it's still a pretty good trade. Which creature do we actually want to kill? Killing Muse Drake allows the Hawk to attack. Killing Electromancer makes it more difficult for them to string together a bunch of uh, spells. Killing Urchin takes care of the biggest creature on the ground. Potentially. Um, I think I like killing the Muse Drake here. Get the red mana in playing as we top deck Aurelia. So our opponent's got a lot of problems to solve. 
Step one, probably Ladef champion. But if they do manage to kill the champion, then anything could still happen. Alright, Hypothesis all the champions, so they're definitely getting back into it here. But we still have a decent amount of uh, powerful top decks remaining. Opponent discarded the second Devious cover-up. So they're definitely very controlling. And a Guild Mage could help them take over the late game. So I expect block trade. I guess if I expect them to do that, maybe I should send everyone. Yeah. We're getting to the point where we don't mind throwing away a creature to get an, an extra point of damage. So they're still trading for the tutus. So they're not trying to extract maximum value out of the guild mage, which is good for us. I guess I'll play out my land. In case we go like wood shaper into something else and need the mana. Well, that makes sense. Niv miss it's quite strong. So there's no instant for one red mana that I necessarily expect here. So can I kill them? They've got two blockers, block block, beetle put counter on a one powered creature and get in for exactly three damage. I think that's the plan. So yeah, let's beetle it up. And I don't think it matters on which one power creature I put it, but I might as well put it on the stray. All right, nice. Managed to beat niv Mizzet just before he managed to run away with the game. After the opponent traded the Guild Mage for one of our 2-2s, it made it more likely for the opponent to have a powerful bomb like niv Mizzet, since they just wanted to protect their life total at all costs, instead of trying to maybe draw out of it with the Guild Mage. But yeah, pretty clean sweep here, 7-0. And uh, yeah, most games weren't all that close. So that was a fun draft. Let's crack some packs. Got an allegiance pack as well hanging out. Alright, sweet. So yeah, that's going to be it for me today. I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed. And as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.